Okay, so um, welcome to my series of video on statistics. And um, before we move on, I would like you to comment. Um, I would like you to share. And uh, most importantly, um, I would like you to subscribe to the channel so we can bring you more con content. Now, in this particular video, this video is part of the series on ANOVA. In this particular video, I'm going to teach on randomized complete block analysis of variance. Now, one of the things you must realize is that the one-way ANOVA analysis we've done so far, it is appropriate so long as we are interested in analyzing one factor at a time, all right? Interested in analyzing one factor at a time. Now, there are some situations in which some extraneous factors, factors that we may not be aware of, okay, that may influence the results. So when that happens, we need to control for those additional factors or we need to block those additional factors so that we can focus on the main factor, all right? We need to block those additional factors so that we can focus on the main factor. And that procedure is called blocking, all right? Now, let me give an example. For instance, if I want to test difference in the average scores among MBA accounting, MBA finance, and MBA management, what will happen is that I am assuming that the only factor that is affecting their scores is the class they are coming from. That is what I'm assuming. That, what, I'm, what I'm assuming is that the only factor that is affecting their scores or that is causing the difference in their scores is the fact that they are in different classes. However, there may be other factors leading to the difference in the scores apart from the fact that they are in different classes. And when that occurs, we need to block those extraneous factors. And that concept is called the concept of blocking. Now, how do we do, or what are the assumptions and uh, randomized complete block and over number one, we assume that the populations are normally distributed. Number two, the populations have equal variances. Number three, the observations within samples are independent. Number four, the data measurement must be interval or ratio. So when do we know that the question is asking you to do randomized complete block and over? Look at this example. It says testing five routes to a destination through three different cab companies to see if there is a difference or if there a difference exists. Now here, the question could have just said that, check whether there is a difference in performance among the three taxi companies or among the three cab companies, all right? That one would have been the simple one we are number, the difference in performance among the three taxi companies. But then if you are, testing the difference in the performance of the taxi among the three companies. But in addition, you are testing it through five different routes, okay? That means that the performance of the cars, apart from the fact that the cars are coming from three different companies, the performance of the cars may also be affected by the routes that you are passing on, all right? So here we have the actual factor to be the company that the car is coming from. But then the five different routes that we are passing on, it may be an extraneous factor that is causing what a difference. Another example is determine the best training program out of four choices for various departments within the company. Now, when that happens, or when we are doing randomized complete block ANOVA, of course, we will need our sum of square total, which we already know, you need our sum of squared between the factor levels, which you already know how to compute. Now, the next thing we don't know how to compute yet is the sum of square within the block, all right? The sum of squared within the block. Then we all know that the sum of square within is the residual. So sum of square within, in this instance, when we add sum of squared block to sum of squared between, and we subtract it from sum of square to that you get the sum of squares between in this instance, all right? Now here, the notes here introduces what you don't know, okay? Everything in the formula you know except 
the sum of squared of the block, all right? So how do we find the sum of squared of the block, all right? So K here is the number of factor levels, okay? K here is the number of levels for the factor, all right? Then SJ, SJ means that the mean for each block, SJ means the mean for each block. Of course, S double bar here means the mean, which is the overall or the grand mean, as we know, all right? Then um, that is the formula. And if you want to find the sum of squared within, now we have to add the sum of squared between the normal one and then um, the normal, I mean, sum of squared between plus the sum of squared between the blocks. When you add the two, and you subtract it from sum of squared total, you are going to get sum of squared within. Okay. And also, if you want to find the mean square blocking, all right, if you want to find the average of sum of squared between the blocks, all right, it is called the mean square blocking. The formula is here. The mean square blocking is sum of squared between the blocks over B minus one where of course B is the number of blocks, okay? Then mean squared between, you already know the formula, sum of squared between over K minus one, then mean squared within. Now mean squared within in this instance of blocking will be sum of squared within over into bracket K minus one times into bracket N minus one, all right? Where N is of course the sample size, the total sample size. So keep note, I mean, take note that when we are doing that off blocking, the mean squared within formula, the denominator is now K minus one times N minus one, okay? All right, so let's move on. So if you run it in Excel, this is how the output will look like, okay? So very soon now I'll, I'll run such analysis in Excel, then I'll show this output. All right, I'll run this analysis in Excel and I'm going to show you this output. So if you run in Excel, whatever comes here is the sum of squared between the blocks. The sum of squared between the, no, the normal sum of squared between, that is the sum of squared between the samples. Then there's the sum of squared within the samples and there's the sum of squared total, all right? And there's the degree of freedom for sum of squared of the, um, between the blocks. That's, the number of blocks minus one. So if you divide this by this, if you divide this thing here by this, we are going to get the mean squared blocking, which is this. And if you divide this by this, because this is the degree of freedom of sum of squared between. If you divide this, you are going to get mean squared between. Then if you divide this by the degree of freedom, everything here, you are going to get the mean squared within. Now we can have an F ratio or an F statistics for between block, all right? So the F ratio for between block is mean squared blocking over mean squared within, all right? Then the, the F test for the normal between samples, which we have already done in the formal videos, so you already know that it is mean squared um, between over mean squared within, all right? That's the normal and over, okay, all right. Now, what is the null hypothesis? Now, because we are controlling for the blocking, you first of all state the main hypothesis. That is, there is no difference among the population means. Then the alternative is that at least two population means are different, all right? Then we know when to reject and when we fail to reject. Of course, when the F, the computed F is greater than the critical F, you reject, if not, we fail to reject. Now, because we are controlling for the blocking, it means that we have to state a hypothesis also for the blocking test, all right? So we are, because we are controlling for factor, we are blocking the extraneous factors, we have to state hypothesis for the blocking also. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in the blocking means, okay? Is it still the mean of how many blocks that is there? Then the alternative is that, of course, at least two of the block means are different. Another way you can put it is that not all the block means are equal. You, 
I mean, this one you could have also said at least two block means are different. Or another way you can put it is that not all the block means are equal. And if you compute your f and it's greater than the critical f, you can get um, the hypothesis. So let's move on. So these are the steps in blocking. Specify the parameter of interest and compute the null and alternative hypothesis. Number two, specify the level of significance for conducting the test. Number three, select the simple random samples for each population and compute treatment, block means, etc. Number four, compute the sum of squares and the ANOVA table. Number five, determine which blocking is effective. Number six, conduct the main hypothesis to test whether the populations have equal mean. Okay, so let's look at an example here. A professor has developed three different midterm exams that are to be graded on a thousand point scale. Before she uses the exams in a live class, she wants to determine if the test will yield the same mean. To test this, a random sample of 14 people is selected. Each student will take the test, all right? So please, in a typical exam, they will tell you that do blocking, all right? In a typical exams, you'll be told to do blocking so that you know that you have to do blocking in addition to the normal, um, in addition to the normal um, ANUA, all right? So here, the main hypothesis is that, of course, there is no difference in the test course among the three different exams, okay? Then the secondary hypothesis, which is the hypothesis for the blocking, is that there is no difference in the mean blocking. Then the alternative is that not all mean blocks are, are equal, all right? That would be the alternative for the blocking hypothesis. Now, let's look at the example here. So usually you'll be giving this information, you'll not be giving the block mean, all right? You'll not be giving the, the um, sorry. You'll not be giving the block mean, sorry, so it's here. You'll not be giving the block mean. So normally the question will look like this. And then it will look like this. All right. So it means that the block means you will not be given. But let me show you how to compute the block mean. The block mean is done. You see, the, the groups themselves are exams one, exam two, exam three, right? That is what we already know from the former examples we saw. Now, if we can find the mean of group one or exam one, which is seven, the mean of all these exams figures here, which is seven, nine, three point five seven. Exam two, the mean is eight. The mean here is eight four nine point five zero, and then exam three, the mean is six six eight point zero zero. Now, in addition, we are going to find the block mean. The question is, how do we find the block mean? The block mean is found by finding the means across the students. So when we find the means horizontally, we have done the block mean. So for instance, if I find, so the, the students here are actually the blocks, all right? Because the actual groups are exam one, exam two, exam three. So we want to check whether apart from being in a certain exam group, another thing is affecting the results. So you now go across the results, not down. So the block means are found by finding the average of these figures, 830 plus 647 plus 630 divided by three. So when you add 830, okay, plus 647, plus 630 divided by three, you are going to get 702.333. So that's how come we find the block mean here. The second block mean will be 743 plus 840 plus 786 divided by three. The third block mean will be 652 plus 747 plus 730 divided by three. So that's how can we get these block means, all right? So that's how can we are able to get these block means. So you follow the procedure to get these block means, okay? Now, what you must know is that when you find the average of all the block means, you get a grand mean, or you can find the average of the individual groups. 
It's the same thing. When you find the average of this plus, this plus divided by three, you also get a grand mean, all right? So when you find the average of the block means, you get a grand mean, or when you find the average of, um, which is, I think, which is simpler, when you find the average of this plus, this plus divided by three, you are supposed to get this grand mean. So this is our grand mean, okay? That is our grand mean. Now, let's go back to our formulas. What we don't know is the block mean. So remember the formula for sum of squared blocking, okay, is K. K is the number of factors or the number of groups, okay, times or into brackets, um, XJ, that is the mean of the J block minus the grand mean squared, all right? So that's how we find it. So let's do it practically. Let me show you practically, and then we move on. Let me show you practically how to find the mean of, or how to find, sorry, the sum of squared blocking. Let's do it practically, and then we move on. Okay. So here, remember that we are going to do summation of K, all right? So K is K. All right, K is the number of groups. Then SJ is each block mean minus the grand mean squared. So here, keep this block means in mind, 702.3379, no, 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 no. So here, if you want to find the sum of squared blocking, Okay, the sum of squared blocking is sigma as g runs from one to b, the number of blocks, then k multiplied by xj minus the grand mean squared, okay? So all that we are going to do is that, please, the k is the number of groups. So the number of groups are three. So I'm going to multiply three by the, a big final answer. All right, I'm going to multiply three by a big final answer. That's why I have done a big bracket, okay? So here, the very first block mean is 702.33, all right? So here, you are going to have 702.33 minus, the grand mean is 770.36, okay, squared, plus the second block mean is 789.67, okay, minus the grand mean 770.36 squared, plus the third block mean was 709.67 minus the grand mean 770.36 squared plus the fourth block mean was 713.67 minus of course 770.36 squared. The fifth block mean um, is 796.33 point three three minus seven seventy point three six squared plus the seat one is six eight six point three three minus seven seventy point three six bracket close squared plus the next one um the seventh one I guess which is um, 806.67 minus 770.36 squared plus 819.33 minus 770.36 squared plus 751.67 minus 770.36 squared plus 
800 min 800.67 sorry minus 770.36 squared plus 758.67 minus 770.36 squared plus 836 minus 770.36 squared plus 747.33 minus 770.36 squared plus 866.67 minus 770.36 squared. So all that I've done is that I've subtracted the grand mean from each of the block means and I've squared it, right? The final answer, you now multiply the final answer by the number of groups, okay? So it's going to be three times. Um, my punching is correct. It's going to be three times, um, three, eight, eight, six, eight point three, three, three. Then, our final answer will be 116605.0, okay, approximately. So this is the sum of squared blocking, all right? This is the sum of squared blocking. That is the sum of squared blocking, okay? All right, so in our table here, this figure here is the sum of squared blocking, okay? And remember the degree of freedom for sum of squared blocking is the number of blocks minus one. Okay, so here, um, the number of blocks, there were 14 blocks, okay? Because the block means are 14, so there were 14 blocks. So the number of blocks minus one is 13, all right? The number of blocks minus one is 13. Then, of course, our normal between samples, our normal between samples, I'm sure we should be able to compute it by now. Okay, our normal between samples, I'm sure, I mean, sum of squared between samples, our normal sum of squared between samples is sigma as i runs from one to k, then n1, ni, sorry, xi minus this, um, the grand mean here. So here, um, all that we are going to do is that we are going to pick the mean for each group. So NI is the mean for first group. So that's 793.57, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. NI is the sample size, sorry. NI is the sample size for a particular group. So the sample size, for a particular group is 14. I mean, all the groups have a sample size of 14. All these groups here, they have a sample size of 14. All the groups have a sample size of 14. So here, um, when you do our calculation, NI is a sample size of group one. And to bracket this, the mean of group one was 793.57 minus the grand mean we all know the grand mean to be 770.36 squared plus the sample size of the second group is 14. The mean of the second group is, or the second exam is 849.50 minus 770.36 squared plus 14 into brackets. The mean of the third group is 668 minus the grand mean 770.36 squared. So when you point this correctly, you are supposed to get the sum of squared between, all right? This is not the blocking one, the normal. Let me take it again. So when you point all these things correctly, 
the sum of squared between is um, two, four, one, nine, nine, one, nine, one, two. Okay, approximately two, four, one, nine, one, two, approximately. All right. And of course, is degree of freedom is k minus one, which is two minus one, which is um, three. All right. Now, what is left is the sum of squared within. So remember that before you get sum of squared within, you should have done your total sum of squared. And we all know how to find the total sum of squares. Subtracting each, I'm um, subtracting the grand mean from each element, squaring it and adding it, the manual approach. So once we know this and we know this, when we add this and this, and we subtract it from the total, we should get the within, okay, the sample size, um, the sum of square within, all right? Now, how do we get the mean sum of, or the mean square blocking? The mean square blocking is the sum of square between blocks, this figure here, divided by the degree of freedom. So this divided by this, you are going to get this. Also, this divided by this, you are going to get this. And then remember how we get the degree of freedom for within samples when we are doing blocking. So that is how we get it. K minus one multiplied by B minus one, all right? So here, it is this one 13 times two because 13 is B minus one, two is K minus one. So that's how can we get a 26 here. When you divide this by this, you are going to get the mean square within, all right? Now let's go to our F. Let's go to our F. Okay, let's go to our F. F for the blocking definitely will be the mean squared blocking. Okay, mean squared blocking divided by the degree, um, the mean squared blocking here divided by the mean squared within. Okay, so what it means is that this F here is the mean squared blocking, that is this figure. Okay, divided by mean squared within. So this figure here is actually 8969.6 divided by mean squared within is 9850.9. Okay, and then the F ratio for the normal um, between samples will be the mean squared between over mean squared within. All right, this one, you've already done it. So that would be um, 12956.4 divided by 9850.9, you get this figure, all right? Now, the next thing is going to go and read our critical F. So remember, if you're going to read critical F for this F here, the degree of freedom of the numerator, the degree of freedom of the numerator in the formula here, the numerator was the eight, nine, so the degree of freedom is 13. And then the degree of freedom of the numerator is 26, all right, 26. So you can go and read our F table, 13 and 26, 5% level. Then if you want to read this critical F here, the degree of freedom of the numerator will be two, and then the degree of freedom of the numerator will be 26, all right? So you can also read it from your F table. Now, clearly, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis of the blocking. Why? Because this computed F is less than the critical F, so it, it, it is within the acceptance bound, so we will fail to reject, all right? So our conclusion is that the blocking was not effective. But when you reject, you will say that the blocking is effective. We have been able to block. Because the null hypothesis of the blocking is that the blocking is not effective. The alternative is that blocking is effective. So since we failed to reject, it means that the blocking was not effective, All right? Then also, when it comes to the actual test of difference between the means, the normal F ratio we've done already in the former videos, 
it is more than the critical F. So we will fail to, uh, sorry, we will reject the null hypothesis that the means are equal. So our conclusion will be that the means are not equal. All right, the means are not equal. Okay. So in the next video, I'm going to teach you how to do it in Excel. And I'm also going to teach you how to do the multiple comparison for blocking. Okay, so in the next video, Excel, I'm going to teach Excel on the randomized blocking. And I'm also going to teach um, on the multiple comparison test for blocking. All right, so kindly subscribe, share, most importantly, um, subscribe to the channel so that we can bring you more content. Thank you.